Psalms is sometimes called the first devotional because in the early days of Christianity or the early days when people got together to follow Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, Psalms was a book that was often encouraged to read because you could identify with what David was saying in his songs, which is what Psalms is. And his words seem to resonate or connect. They seem to fit. They seem to speak what we might want to say to God. And we didn't feel like we had the right words to say sometimes. And many people throughout the years have used psalms or explained psalms in a way to help people to share what they're feeling to express themselves to God in a way that they might not think of expressing themselves. A lot of worship songs have been just simply David's psalms or Asaph changed into music form in order to give some background to it and to make it feel and to portion out that which we're expressing to God. And in those beautiful words and ways, we see a lot of who David was, how he was, and who God was towards him. Because David was a man that I like to say was after God's own heart, meaning that he was always pursuing the tender heart of God. He was always knowing what God's heart was in the sense of God was merciful, God was just, God was love, God was righteous, God was holy. David seemed to understand who his God was because David sinned. David was a murderer. David committed murder. He committed premeditated murder. He was a man of war. He killed in the name of God, but he also killed in his own selfishness, desires. So David was very well aware of his own failings but he was also aware of God's forgiveness. So in Psalms, we see a lot of reality check when it comes to knowing who God is, what God is, and how God dealt with David. In looking at Psalms, we were expressing different portions of it as a devotional to feel and see and understand what God might speak to us today, to hear him share with us some encouragement. And in Psalm 8, verse 3 and 4, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you should visit him? God created with his fingers the moon and the stars, and he ordained them, or he set them in place. That's basically what ordination is. It's putting it in its proper place. It's setting it into a design that God has caused to be there for a purpose. You could say a purpose-driven realization of his creation in what it was designed to be. That's like you and me. We're designed for a purpose. We are becoming vessels of honor, vessels of wrath, or becoming likened unto the Son of God. Even as the Son of Man came from heaven and died for us and gave his life for us, that we should have relationship with the Father in heaven. And as Jesus has bring the reality of his eternity into us, we recognize our own fallibility, like David did, of how much we fail sometimes in comparison to what God has done. And David recognized that when he looked up in the stars at night, when he saw the skies, when he considered the heavens, when he was aware that God, as he surveyed the vast universe, as he could see in the desert air so clear, the Milky Way and all the universe that was laid out before him, that he knew beyond any shadow of a doubt that God had made it all. And then he was dumbfounded, just as you and I are, that God, who created all these things, thought about him. Isn't it amazing that God cares about you? I mean, literally, why? Who am I that, God, you should be mindful of me? And why would you consider me when you have all the universe laid out before you, when you could do anything you want to? Why do you care about me? 
Did you know that God cares about you intimately, personally? That He has so arranged the circumstances of your life to bring you to Him so you would know Him like David did? That's what David's saying. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And what is, and remember this part, the son of man that you should visit him? Did you know God visits you? While you're asleep, I am more than persuaded that God hovers over you by his Holy Spirit even as he hovered over the waters. You can't see him, but if you had eyes to see, then I believe you would see that God is there. Because God is inside you if you're born again. God visits you at special times when he said, when people knock at your door and ask to come in or that you give them a cup of cold water in my name or you do something in my name that I've commanded you to do, don't be surprised if you've entertained angels unawares, messengers from me, people that I have sent. And so doing, you have done so unto me. So God has visited you in some way at some time in some purpose for his own reason. But why? Why would God visit you? Why does God visit me? And why does he spend every morning with us sharing his heart and expressing to us the direction we should go, the way to live a life that would be holy and true unto him, that would be faithful to what God has commanded us and what God has said we should do to have an abundant life, to have a life that would be lived eternally with Him. Why would God care? Because Jesus died. And more than that, what Jesus wanted to share with you that you don't know, what Jesus wanted to tell you that you don't understand, what Jesus wants both of us to comprehend that we have no way of knowing is God is love and the love that God is is so far beyond anything we've ever seen experienced or known that even when the Son of Man the Son of God came and expressed the Father's love for the world so much that Jesus died for us and for those that hate and those that choose violence and those that are in sin and while we were yet sinners he died for us that was a perfect expression that was a perfect demonstration. That was a perfect realization of God who is love. Because God is love. And the only way that he could express it was in doing so for you. Because God proved he loves you. That's why he's mindful of you. That's why he cares. That's why he dares to share in Psalms with you what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that he visits with you because he loves you he wants to visit with you and he desires you to spend time with him that kind of love is hard to not respond to that kind of love takes some sheer anger and wrath and malice to stay away from that kind of love really requires someone who wants to go to hell to be as far away from love as they can possibly get. Because that kind of love draws all men unto itself. And God is seeking to visit with you today to know that kind of love.